Good evening and welcome to the Low Planning Board for Monday, June 7th, 2021. The first matter on the agenda tonight would be the, <clears throat> excuse me, minutes for approval for the May 17th, 2021. Anybody have any comments, corrections uh, on the minutes for May 17th? Mr. Chairman, I'll make I a- just uh, to say, I, oh, I just wanted to say I wasn't there. So I okay. just won't be voting, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Fischer. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the minutes as submitted and uh, with a comment. I think it was, was it Dylan that did these minutes, I think, Fran? I'm not sure off the top of my head. Well, we yeah. got to give credit to the right person because, boy, I'll tell you, they, they did a good job. They were, they were quite yeah, well, it was Dylan. Yeah. <clears throat> he did a good job. So again, I sent him an email the next, I sent him an email thanking him as well after he came out because he captured everything. Yeah, no, he did a good job. So I'll make a motion to approve as submitted, Mr. Chairman. I'll second that. Motion made and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Chair vote yes. And anybody vote in opposition? Hearing none, those minutes are approved. Moving along the agenda, we have a site plan amendment and a special permit for 357 Pawtucket Street. Franco American Holding LLC has applied to the low planning board for a site plan review amendment and a special permit approval for the above address. The applicant is seeking to increase the total number of units at the development excuse me, from 53 units to 62 units. The subject property is located in the traditional mixed use zoning district and requires site plan review under section 11.4 and special permit approval per section 12.1 E. I believe Mr. that we Chairman, have, before yes, you commence, ahead. just uh, for the record, I will be recusing myself on this matter. Okay, so Mr. Fischette will not be voting. Chairman, I will also be recusing myself. Okay, so Russell will not be voting as well. So that leaves Mr. Malovich, Ms. Gavin, Mr. Chang, and myself. Um, I'll turn it over to the applicant at this time. And okay. who's doing the presentation? And Attorney James Harrington, uh, the applicant. Uh, Brian McGowan. Good to see you, Council. Um, so, just um, when we only have four members voting on the special permit, we give you the option of whether you'd like to continue it and have a full board, so you'd have five members. If not, obviously, um, the site plan, you just need the majority three of the four, the special permit, you'd need all four of us. And whenever that happens, we've always been willing to let the applicant decide whether they want to proceed with just the four people who are voting or whether they would want to have it continue to have the full fifth body member sitting. Oh, yeah, and I appreciate that. And I, I you know, um, we're willing to proceed with- Okay, four. okay, thank, thank you, Council. Yeah. Um, so with, just with that, the, uh, the, amendment itself is fairly minor in that every, you know everything that's changing is going to be within the mansion portion of the building which was previously um, approved for commercial use um, and that's a, a approximately 22,000 square feet uh, what the applicants looking to do now is to keep they have a, they have an office in the building now uh, approximately 2,000 feet. That would remain commercial use because they'll maintain an office there, and uh, and the rest of the mansion would be converted to residential use. You know, as time went on with this project, uh, you know, particularly with a lot of the events over the last uh, year and a half, it you know the there's been a little bit much more demand for the residential, and had a little bit of trouble uh, with the same level of uh, uh, tenants committing for commercial use. So, um, outside there's no, it, the, there, we are increasing the, uh, parking spaces just to accommodate the residential use by adding an additional nine spaces. It doesn't involve any construction. That's the, it, it's already, they are already able to do by striping nine new, um, spots within the existing paved area. So there'll be no further disturbance outside. And that, and that uh, we'll leave to any questions, but that's okay. Is anybody want anybody else um, on behalf of the applicant want to speak, council, or just yourself? Uh, just myself. Okay. All right. 
So at this point in time, if you have nothing further, what I'll do then is I'll open it up to the public. Um, does anybody this evening want to speak in favor of this project? Anybody in favor? In favor? Hearing none, anybody in opposition? In opposition? In opposition? Hearing none, at this point in time, do any of the board members have any questions? Council, I, um, I'm sure you did see a um, memo that we did get from um, staff dated back on April 21st. Um, they had basically general comment. I think one of the only thing that popped out was what I saw was they said something about you need some snow storage label on the plan or something. Okay. Can you just address that, please? I'd appreciate it. I think that was what was submitted to you from Peter that we got back on April 21st, prior to the continuous of the last meeting. Yeah, you know, and I had noted down that, uh, you know, the, the restriction that we had to put on, and I may have, you know, and perhaps we could make it a condition that he, we address that after, uh, just by throwing okay. storage on there. No, Mr. Chairman. Yes, absolutely. I didn't. Hey, Jim. Well, for, the record, for the record, David Jordan, engineer, land surveyor with Greenman Peterson, uh, working on the project with uh, uh, Attorney Harrington. Uh, yeah, if we need to add some snow storage designations on the plan, uh, that, that's an easy thing we can do. Um, and as Attorney Harrington said, you know, there's no work involved with this other than striping some mm -hmm. some lines, putting some lines on an existing paved area to create the additional spaces we need. Um, we we have we we need 125 spaces uh, based on the parking calculations, and we're providing 126. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Any other board members have any other board members have any questions? Um. Chairman, I have one question. Yes. Caleb, go ahead, please. For the applicant. And I, I noticed, well, I, w I wasn't uh, with the board when this was uh, first approved. So um, would the applicant mind to explain a little bit of the um, one story garage and how that piece of like pavement um, worked together on site? Because I will figure, you know, snow storage, parking, or even like landscaping can go on that. But autonomous uh, concrete area, but I'm sure there is a purpose there. Yeah, if I could, Mr. Chairman, address that? Yeah, absolutely, sir, go right ahead. Yeah, so so the garage that's there, um, it's really just used for storage currently. It's really not part of, it's not in use by the, uh, by the uh, development. Um, that's section of the site. You know, there may be some additional uh, development or some additional use on that. Um, but right now that is just uh, a building that existed there prior um, and it's again not being used uh, as part of this development at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't have other questions, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Caleb. Um, Bob, Shanae, any questions? Uh, Mr. That, uh, go ahead, uh, Shanae. Uh, Ladies, uh, go first, Bob, if you don't mind. All right. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Janae. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just have a couple of questions for the applicant because sure. um, I, like Caleb, wasn't here in 2018 when the project sure. was presented. So I just wanted to confirm that it was presented or what was built um, is according to what was approved back in 2018 and what's proposed today that other than the addition of the nine, um, the nine striped parking spaces that otherwise nothing else has changed. And I wanted um, to specifically ask about um, the mansion itself, if there is any proposed modifications to the exterior, considering it's being changed from commercial to residential. I, yes, I could, uh, I could address that, Mr. Chair. Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Jordan. So, so yes, what's been built out there uh, currently is, is only what was approved by this board a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the 53 units that exist today were approved by this board. Um, in terms of the mansion, there is uh, no change to the exterior of the building that's going to occur as part of this. All of the, the additional um, apartments uh, will be built inside, so it's just 
uh, you know, partition walls inside the building with no change to the exterior. Um, as Attorney Harrington said, originally the plan was to use the majority of that space as office space, uh, but the market certainly changed over the past year and a half. And there's uh, been a, the project's been so well received uh, by everybody uh, that clearly there is a demand for additional apartment units. And this is an opportunity to you know, bring some life back into that mansion. Thank you, sir. Shanae, do you have any further follow-up on that? Or is that answer what you have your question may be? I think that answers my question. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, Bob, I'm back to you, please. And as a follow-up to her, uh, Shanae's question, they're building new units in the interior of the mansion. How badly are they going to beat up the architecture to, to create those units on the inside? Does yeah. anyone know? Yeah, I mean, from the beginning, uh, Brian McGowan has always uh, tried to maintain as much as he can the character of the inside of the building, because it is a beautiful building. Um, so he is trying to incorporate that into the units themselves. Um, it's, it's not like they're going to gut the entire uh, building and start over. They're trying to work with what's there, because it really is a beautiful building inside as well. Yeah, those would be... Uh very preferred units for, I think, the renters. So that's all my own, thank you, that's my only question. Okay, thank you, Bob. So I just have a couple of things. Um, the other note that we had was a stormwater comments. The property owner shall sweep slash vacuum the paved areas on this property and clean the drainage structures annually. Otherwise, they have no further questions from stormwater. Is that something council that um, is okay with the applicant? Yes. Um, I had the opportunity to um, visit the site when they where it came before us the first time, and I was fortunate enough to get all the way up on the roof where they were going to build, because I know one of the questions was the sight line from way up top was one of the special permits that were required. So one of the um, employees who was working there at the time, once I introduced myself, he called Ms. McGowan up and asked if it was okay to Mr. Linehan go up and take a look on the roof. And we got the approval and um, it's a beautiful view from up top, especially when you can look all the way up the Merrimack River. And um, Basically, I went there again and I noticed, excuse me, you know, the old elevator that was in the building and the structural that was inside that I met to Bob mentioned. It was a beautiful, beautiful layout. And then obviously um, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago before the last meeting, I was up there and it really came out real nice. Um, I know you did a lot of good work on the station sort of cross coming in on the side and that back area and uh, spent a lot of time and effort to beautify that area up there. And uh I think it's coming out really, really nice. Uh, like you say, you're not touching the outside of the building. Um, you know, the hope was more for office buildings, but um, things have changed. I mean, even all of us now, not, you know, not even people in office buildings, you know, we're all doing remotely things. I'm sure that had a big thing to do with, um, you know, things not being um, developed in, as businesses. Uh, I know a lot of people aren't going to go back as much as they were before. A lot of companies aren't going to be occupying um, business space as a result of the pandemic. So, uh, but I think that project itself is a good project. I mean, I was in favor of the last time and uh, obviously I'm in favor of it this time. Um, I think it's, it's coming along very, very nice. And uh, um, I remember that area when, when I was a young kid in that area from a long time and it's really come a long way. And uh, I give you guys a lot of credit. It looks very, very nice. I give you a lot of credit. It looks great. So, saying that, any of the board members have any further questions? If not, um, I would make a motion that we do approve the site plan um, with the recommendation that was incorporated by the stormwater comments. The property owner should sweep back in the paved areas on the project and clean the drainage structure annually. And also on the plans that they designate where the snow storage will be. So I'll make a motion to that effect on the site plan. Do we have a second on that motion? A second on your motion, Chairman. Okay, motion made by myself and second by, by Caleb. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so um, any opposition, hearing none. So we have four members voting. So we have four in favor and none against. Uh, so now we have a special permit. Uh, I'll make a motion on the special permit that we approve the special permit with the same two conditions. One being with the stormwater comments, the property owner should sweep back and pay the area on the project. 
and keep the clean drainage annually, and also uh, make sure that they have the snow storage outlined on the project. Um, so I'll make that motion as a special permit. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Well, okay, some motion made in the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair, Chair votes yes, so obviously we made the motion. Uh, and, and, he, and we only have four people voting. All people voted in favor. Therefore, um, the special permit is approved as well. Uh, four in favor, none against. Um, I felt it was more important that Bob and I spoke up a little bit because we saw the original plan. So it's a little more difficult on the alternates to come forward uh, to make an amendment on the site that didn't have the benefit of seeing when it first came in. But I remember seeing it the first time. We spent a lot of time on that project, uh, getting it uh, approved back then. And uh, we wish you well. So good luck with the project. And uh, hopefully everything will continue to go in a favorable result. Great. We thank wish you. you well. Thank you. Okay. So let's see. Okay, moving along on the agenda, we have a site plan review and special permit for 23 Cabot Street, 616 slash 666 Merrimack Street, and 591 and 539 Market Street. Will Susie and Don Gracia have applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for various approval to construct a mixed use building consisting of 32 dwellings and approximately 35,000 square feet of commercial space, as well as parking structure on 23 Cabot Street. Um, actually, the same address is <laughs> above. And they have applied before. Yeah, they got for the ZBA, which I think they already had their hearing. So they're before us in the planning board. And they have before us, the, uh, as indicated for the addresses above, the properties are located in the urban neighborhood mixed use zoning district. And this requires a site plan approval under section 11.4 and special permit approval under 12.1 E. And also it says uh, special permit for 12.4. And after speaking with, um, Free on today, that will be 12.4 B, and also for section 12.8, it'll be 12.8 B. So, may we hear from the applicant, please? Hey, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, Attorney William Martin, 491 Dutton Street, uh, speaking for the project applicant. Uh, I wanted to just say a few brief words and, and then turn this over to uh, the architects. We have a number of people on the development team here tonight, including the developer, Will Susie, uh, engineers from Hancock and Associates, Brian Godreau and Russ Tefford. Um, we have two project architects, Stephen Chung and Don Blasia, uh, James Emanuel, a landscape architect and project manager, Steve Jonkis. So uh, we hope we'll be able to answer any questions that any of you may have about the project. Um, as you said, we're here for a few items of relief. We did get approval at the Board of Appeals uh, on a number of things that uh, was voted a few weeks ago and decision actually just filed today. Um, so what we need here is a site plan approval, obviously, and then a special permit um, for more than the seven units. We have 32 units proposed. This is a two, two tower type design. Uh, two five-story buildings with a parking garage in between. Uh, one of the buildings will be a commercial building for Jean d'Arc Credit Union. The second building will be residences with retail uses on the first floor. Um, the parking is a little unique. I don't want to get too much into the details, but the first floor of the parking garage will serve the office building and enter from Merrimack Street. The second floor will serve the residential building and enter from Market Street. Uh, because of the slope of the grade from Merrimack to Market along Cabot, we're able to incorporate that design feature. Uh, so the elements of relief, again, just briefly, are for the office building and also a special permit because we intend to use the first floor of that building for office space, not that won't be any retail space and that requires a special permit. On the residential uh, building, the retail uses may require a special permit if they're more than 5,000 square feet. We just don't know how those uh, uses will be subdivided yet. We don't have users identified. Um, so we've applied uh, for the relief in the event that, that we need that for more than 
if there's one user for more than 5,000 square feet. Um, so I think uh, there are a number of unique features with the design that respect the history of the neighborhood in this in the project. So I'm going to uh, stop speaking and let uh, Stephen Chung uh, take you through more specific elements of the design. We do have the comment letter and I'm prepared to uh, respond to those items as well in the comment letter. But I think you'll um, get a good flavor of the project from from Mr. Chung. So. Uh, I'd ask him to make a presentation now. Okay, thank Thanks. you, Council, and nice seeing you again. You too, Mr. Chairman. Is it okay if I share my screen? Absolutely, that's very helpful, sir. We really appreciate when you do that. Okay, great. Do you see this? Yes. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to do a kind of an overview design concept, and then uh, as we get into the plans, pass it on to my colleague, Don Blatcha. He and I are working on this project, have been since the beginning. Um, and then he'll turn it back to me. I've, I've got a couple of more sort of detailed images that I want to show you. So this is just uh, identifying the site. I mean, I, you know, I'm from Boston. You're all from Lowell or, or at least in that vicinity. So you know it better than me, but, but I just want to kind of identify just so that we're all kind of um, comfortable with where this building is. So Cabot Street. Merrimack and Market, and this sort of red is highlighting the site. And just a 3D view, just the same same situation, just kind of want to uh, orient everybody. Um, I, I don't want to necessarily go through all of these, but I just wanted to kind of show you in, in case questions, there's questions or people are wondering what's there, but really the site is on, and, you know, here, there's a building across the street. Basically the site is to the right here. On the next slide, the site is also to the right, sort of moving down the site on Merrimack Street. The site is to the left. And uh, again, the site is to the left here. So just try to give you a, a flavor for what's there. It's a bit lifeless right now. I mean, this was admittedly in the wintertime, it's a bit cold there, but um, not a lot of activity at that time. Uh, on Cabot Street, uh, uh, the site is to the left here. And again, always this sort of little bank building is, is kind of a good reference, uh, which will be removed, obviously demolished with our proposal. Um, intersection here, um, site here, and then up on Market Street, sort of some housing, and then this is the site which has been kind of fenced off. Um, and then the condition here again, the fence to the right, and the site is just sort of beyond that. Um, so, so, you know, again, not being from Lowell, I mean, when I when we looked at this assignment, I got really excited by kind of visiting and exploring and trying to get to know Lowell, you know, as, as best as I could. I've only been there for Red Sox games, or at least the, the AA games. And um, having spent, having a chance to sort of look around, I really was impressed by buildings like this one. And it really kind of gave us, um, I would say, some inspiration for what, what we thought this building might be. Um, and I just wanted to kind of highlight a couple of key ideas here. I mean, besides the, let's say, masonry and sort of coloring, um, of the buildings. It was something about the punched windows. And then really for me, this kind of plaid, this kind of gridded plaid, three-dimensional kind of plaid, which was taking place. And of course I found that kind of funny later, which of course I learned that the textile museum is there and plaid is kind of something that's sort of recurring. Um, in any case, these are sort of ideas that were swirling around um, in the very beginning. And kind of more study. And again, I don't want to go too far into it, but just want to kind of explain, you know, so appreciative of the architectural heritage of Lowell and some of the wonderful architecture in the past. And while this is a new building, we wanted to certainly learn as much as we could from the past. And so looking at things like, uh, again, the set of uh, venestration, punched vertically, punched vertically oriented, punched windows, how structures sort of reach it down to the ground. Um, I was sort of impressed by these little tunnels, um, let's call them tunnels and connections over streets, um, which obviously was used for uh, transport material, but something that we then sort of learned from for our for our project, as you'll see. Um, and I also just want to kind of note that there are details like the watermark at the base, some banding, horizontal banding. I mean, these are details that we just thought all of them were really giving us good kind of direction or ideas for uh, the proposal. Um, I'm not going to really get into this, but just so uh, sort of uh, excited and, and thinking about sort of the past you know, glory of, of, of Lowell and the wonderful architecture that's there and thinking that this building in a small way could be a catalyst for this little part of the site. So this kind of the, um, you know, exciting that Don and I had to, to took on this assignment. And, and I think that these are important and I'll explain later how some of these patterns and some of these details and textiles um, uh, are incorporated into our scheme. 
Um, and I'll just do a couple of quick little things and then I'll want to pass this back to Don. So this is just a 3D model, sort of the model dropped into Google Earth just to see to understand the massing, what Bill was explaining of basically two blocks, an L-shaped block, which is residential with retail below, uh, the commercial block or the office block, um, connected by a podium. And I think I just showed you an image of two buildings which are sort of conjoined and having a sort of similar kind of idea. Um, just very quickly in terms of concept, I mean, this is one development. The buildings are different in nature, different in size, but we sort of looked at them like relatives, like brother and sister, not like two diff very different buildings, but, but relatives. So similar architectural treatment um, joined by the similar language and details and so forth, but obviously different, different uses, different sizes and so forth. And this is just for orientation. This again, this is Merrimack Street, Market Street on top and Cabot, um, sort of L-shaped building, the residential building, really sort of thinking that that, 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 um, that corner could be somehow more important or expressed in some way. Um, the parking, as Bill was explaining, is sort of nestled in the back. Because of the level change from uh, Merrimack and Market, there is really now two levels of parking. The upper parking is sort of accessed from the top. And again, Don will explain this, but it's accessed from the top. And down below, the parking on the ground floor is actually accessed by this little tunnel um, for the, for the uh, office use. And here, this sorry, I should probably show you this, but basically here's the parking uh, from Market Street. And this is for residences that would sort of park in this outdoor, uh, this uh, open lot. And down below is the, uh, the parking for the office. Okay, so Don, you want to, I'm going to stop my share. I'm going to just sort of let you share your screen and get into the, the floor plans a little bit before I get into sort of renderings. Sure. So I'm Don Blasta um, and been working again with Stephen and I'm going to do my best to get the uh, share screen up here. Not, I'm not as proficient as uh, Stephen on these uh, sharing. <laughs> Um, so anyway, we're going to start with the ground floor here and um, a couple of the comments, if I remember correctly, and if I leave any out, please uh, Bill remind me. Um, so we're at the ground floor right here, and this is the uh, access that Stephen was talking to, talking about, <clears throat> which would go ahead and go under the building. And basically, this is at grade parking. And again, Brian, uh, the civil engineer is here and can discuss more about the site plan, so I'm not going to get too far into that. Um, so this portion of the building here is for the credit union. And um, as Bill mentioned, um, this is the commercial space that they were discussing here. Um, we come over here from this point to the left, I'm uh, sorry, to the right is all part of the uh, residential building. Again, contains some smaller retail space here, retail space on the corner. We have the residential lobby, which contains the mail room, small um, residential lobby here. And it also has a lower uh, level vestibule that does go out to the back of the building. We have a bike room for residential bike storage and typical uh, back of house services for mechanical residential storage and so such. And going to go to the oops, let's get too far here. Apologies, we're a little running a little slow here. If I may comment, it looks like you're doing this on an etch a sketch right now. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, Jerry. <laughs> I don't know, I'm thinking how many people remember those things. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Let me see if I can't uh, speed this process up here. So you had to make the on? swivy lines. It's, uh, some days it's fast and other days and whenever I want to be fast, it seems like it always slows down on me, so.
What are you trying to pull up, Don? Because I have something also if you if you need. I'm going to put on the second floor plan, but I'm not sure why. It's just. But you, you, should, you can see the second floor now. Yeah, but it's not coming all the way up. It's... To get the general layout on the units now. I think on the right side you can see the residential building, the units are demarcated. Typically two bedroom units, the corners have three bedrooms for the corner. <clears throat> So, so Don, what else do you want to keep showing? Why don't we keep going? So um, basically we have the commercial space on this side. Right? And again, um, we're still developing the interior layouts. We have um, two three bedroom units in this corner here. The rest of the units up through here are two bedroom units on this section over here. Um, and then we have a um, rooftop um, access here for the residential units. That happens on all five floors and all four floors. Yes, these, these the residential units are the same all the way up. The garden obviously is only on the lower level, just above the first floor. And um, so, Don, why don't you close out and let me just keep going with the because I have the plans too. So, let's just I don't want to everyone have to yeah. wait. Sure they have a full agenda. So let me just go back. Swim back to you and, um, and so uh, these are his plans. But do, did you want to say anything else about the second floor plan, or did you just sort of cover what you wanted to cover? No, I think we. I mean, I think we've covered it. Um, I did want to see if I could pick up those other elevations, but uh, we can use yours and. Okay, go, go ahead. So again, off of Merrimack Street, this is the um, entrance to the lower <laughs> parking area. We have the uh, retail space here, access to the um, bank. Then further to the right, we have um, the retail space in between. And then, yep, retail space in between. The further to the right is the entrance into the residential lobby. And then on the very corner, we have more retail space. Um, I think from there, Steve. Stephen, if uh, yeah, okay, good, keep going. Okay, <clears throat> this is just kind of an unfolded view on Mer Merrimack Street, looking at the two blocks, and um, you know, I think we'll we'll have more views, but basically, uh, I think you, I explained sort of that that plaid and trying to sort of look at some of the some of the buildings in Lowell that I thought I thought were interesting, and certainly wanted to recall some aspects of that, again, I'm not trying to reproduce history, but let's say uh, acknowledge and, and sort of embrace a, a lot of the wonderful buildings that I sort of saw. And, you know, speaking to Will Susi um, and sort of appreciating how, how much he appreciates the architecture of Lowell, I think that made for um, a lot of these decisions to be sort of, uh, let's say easy, let's say. So let's just keep going. So this is the corner and this is a sort of expressed uh, let's say it's not balconies, but it's uh, maybe more curtain wall, a lot more glass. Just try to acknowledge that importance of that corner. So remember, we're going up the street here, up Cabot, and here we envision kind of a retail space. I mean, it would be wonderful. It would be some sort of food, food or maybe a little grocery store or something like that. But anyway, we'll see how that goes as we go. Um, the, the landscaping is, I tried my best to sort of uh, follow um, our landscape architect's proposal. So I think, you know, that'll have, have a little bit of work. But in any case, that's the, the, the concept. And let's just keep going. And so this is looking at the office building. And this is that, I don't call it tunnel, but let's say entry underneath the building into the parking for the bank, uh, 
we can talk about, let's say, the control. Okay. That's something that we worked out. But in any case, this is sort of the lobby for uh, the bank, the entry here. And actually, this is something I learned from Lowell. This is one of those images that I showed you where actually going underneath, underneath the building, this is actually glass. So this becomes a lobby, which is on two sides. So kind of a neat detail. So again, lots of the language, a lot of the materials are in learning from, let's say, Lowell, inspired by a lot of the buildings that are there. I think that you can sort of see the streetscape besides the landscaping, but I mean, we're sort of, I would love if we could figure out how to get street lights that were sort of of that, of that spirit. Um, and we have some benches and, and so forth. So try to sort of animate the, the street life. This is on um, Market Street and just sort of approaching the parking. I'm just trying to do the best I can to show you. I mean, yes, this is a parking garage so or a parking structure. And, um, and the idea is that, oops, that's only one image there. I'll show that again, in, sorry, in another image. But basically this is the back of the building and this is the parking structure. I'm gonna show you that little entry to the, to the, uh, to the um, parking. Um, again, this is more of a detail of the bank, uh, the office side. This is the lobby, the entry, uh, you know, retail space or office space on the ground floor. This is all banks or bank offices up above. This is the access into parking, and people coming out of parking like that. This is the residential building. This is the kind of connector, which is, has another retail space, entry into retail, lobby, and then uh, sorry, entry into residential, lobby, and then retail. Oh, and so I, I just want to sort of call attention to just a couple of things. If you look at some of these details, so I'm going to sort of have a detail here, but if you look at some of these details, these are things we're working on now. And again, this is sort of the things we're looking at with the textiles and the patterns and trying to find ways to to um, recall uh, some of those, some of those, um, say, historical references or uh, patterns. And you'll see this in, um, take place in bands, but also in the space between windows. So these are laser cut panels, which um, we envision sort of mounting in between windows and then band. So let's just see. And here is a kind of a, a detail, a banding detail. Again, something that sort of finding patterns from the, the textile past, let's say of Lowell. And you can sort of see that's the intent for some of these, uh, the details between windows. So this is the residential side. And then for the bank side is where we use this pattern. And then for the retail or the residential side, we use this, this pattern. And so here, here's the residential side where you can sort of see that detail. I think it's kind of neat the way that they're laser cut and then have a shadow that's cast on to the wall behind it, a little bit of depth. And here's that sort of a detail for the banding. But again, all being worked out right now, but just try to show and demonstrate kind of our uh, appreciation and acknowledgement of some of the wonderful architecture that's there and wanting to kind of learn from it and recreate it um, in our own sort of modern way, let's say. So ground floor, we have kind of a larger unit masonry, a water table. We have a kind of a larger unit masonry, a banding, and now we have our kind of banding sort of going up the building. And then let's say bank side, again, a very diff different kind of detail, different kind of detail between windows, but similar banding, uh, similar details same sort of ground floor and, and masonry unit, large masonry unit, all kind of unified by that podium expression. It's not brick, but the idea is that the coloration uh, will sort of recall that. I mean, we do have to build a building and we do have to find kind of a, um, you know, be mindful of budget and so forth. So I think it made, didn't make so much sense to go brick all the way up to the top, but we still think we can create something quite rich by using other materials. Um, oh, here, sorry, so here, Here's that entry into that parking in the back. And I just wanted to show how even with some of this sort of visual privacy or screening from the parking, we want to kind of reuse some of those, those, those screen details. So even from the backside, um, something nice that, um, you know, a nicer detail that you sort of have in the front of the building. Um, and then in terms of interior design, and I'll go fast because I don't know if this is, is necessarily your purview, but I just want to show you how we sort of envision this as a total sort of immersive project and think about um, some of these wonderful kind of textures and materials and plaids uh, for inspiration for branding, uh, lobby, some common areas, for example. So here's the lobby for the residential building as we envision it, you know, trying to play with the plaid and sort of a, you know, painted brick and wood and some of the materials you'd find in old mill buildings and then sort of the decorative elements you'd find maybe, again, these plaids and, and try to sort of recall materials um, that, that you might find in older buildings in Lowell, let's say. And then at nighttime, maybe what that would look like on the street. 
Um, we, often with these residential lobbies, we try to make that lobby really a kind of place for a communal place for residents. And you know, I've done buildings where people go down there, they watch TV. That's a place where they get to know each other. So um, hopefully that will sort of help to animate the street a little bit along uh, with the retail on either side. Typically unit, two bedroom unit. Um, here's a bay window. This is kind of an open layout. So this is sort of a style we envision, but pretty modern, open. People, uh, people tend to uh, sort of younger, younger feeling people, like, meaning they like this sort of open, modern feel to it. I don't mean younger people. I just mean people who sort of like that look and feel, contemporary kind of feel. And then looking out uh, one of these bay windows. Um, and then uh, uh, a night shot, maybe that corner. And I just want to show one thing. So hold on one second. Tell me if you can see this. So I just made a quick little animation that just kind of hopefully uh, sort of enlivens the scene here and just helps to sort of complete the picture. You can see that, everybody? Yes. <clears throat> Great. Yeah. So this is the bank building, you know, looking across the street. And just sort of we're driving along, just trying to, you know, get a sense of this overall place and how the sort of ground floor is animated. This is walking across the crosswalk and get the corner. This is the uh, maybe entry into the commercial space. Uh, moving down Cabot Street, you can sort of see the slope of the hill and how can I get the ground floor gets eaten up by that slope, but um, still same sort of architectural expression. This is the back where you have the parking. So now there's like a little parkway, uh, uh, parking driveway into the parking uh, controlled. This would be at this would be residential, um, just a, an approach to the residential. <coughs> and again, nighttime, hopefully it's you know, animated, some good activity. Uh, and that's it. So happy to answer any questions. So thank you for listening. I'm sorry if I took too, too, we took too long. That's quite all right, Stephen. It was a good presentation. So, um, so do you tell me where I'll put it? I'll just put it someplace and you guys can feel free to ask anything. Don and I are here for, for you. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. Did you want to did you want to share your screen and do the civil or the? Yeah, just just there's a couple of quick points that I want to make. For the record, Brian Goodrow, Hancock Associates. Um, Stephen, and leave this where I can take it off. Yeah, can you stop share? And yep. I'll, I'll go to the site quickly. Uh, so attached is uh or this this is the site plan um Stephen and don did a fantastic job just kind of describing the project as a whole with renderings to understand what this is going to look like uh there's a couple of key points i want to make first uh we have a completely developed parcel right now and what we're doing um as a part of this project is, is introducing green space trying to trying to improve the neighborhood um and there's a little pocket park over here on this corner um, we have been in uh, a number of different conversations with the city regarding stormwater management, and uh, we are fully compliant with both DEP requirements as well as city rule requirements. Um, there's a total of 152 parking spaces, 72, 77 on the lower deck, 75 on the upper deck, and uh, 129 is what's required as part of this um, proposal. Um, traffic, we've done a preliminary traffic analysis and pre-COVID levels, the intersection of Cabot and Market sees about 1,200 uh, average daily trips a day during the, the peak hour. Um, and this, as a part of this project, we're only going to be seeing less than 100, so a, a less than 10% increase. Um, one of the key points of this plan is we're actually working hand in hand with the city uh, last Friday, we actually submitted our one-stop application for a Mass Works grant. So, as a part of this project, um, the state we applied to state funding of 1.7 million dollars to upgrade uh, the Adams Salem Market um, Cabot intersection as well as the Cabot Merrimack Street intersection. So, uh, new cabinets, new new signalization. And as a part of kind of the overall block, we're going to be improving all the sidewalks. So from essentially where the upgrade of uh, 
Suffolk Street, where the, the canal bridge was replaced, um, they, they basically stopped the concrete sidewalks. Well, we're going to carry that through, and we're now going to improve the entirety of Market Street, down Cabot Street, and then across the Merrimack Street frontage as well. Um, street trees are being proposed, street lighting is being proposed, and also uh, there's a, a neat little uh, green infrastructure project that's going to be associated with this. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to create some LID street drainage um, and, and take what is currently uncontrolled uh, runoff from Market Cabot and Merrimack, which goes into Lowell's combined stormwater and sanitary sewer, and, and create some, some recharge elements. Um, you know, with, with, with that said, uh, I would like to have James Emanuel, he's our, our landscape architect, maybe dive into just a little bit more of the, the thought process and the palette of, um, of, of planting. James. Yes, thanks, uh, Brian. Maybe you could zoom in a little bit on the Market Street, um, and we can just kind of use that as an example to see the pocket park and then see the streetscape elements uh, there so we can get an understanding of what we're proposing. Of course, to the to the right of the screen, you'll see the pocket park, which currently is a paved area. And um, that would be open to public, but it also serves as a, a permeable surface where there isn't one right now. We would be introducing quite a bit of green trees, uh, shrubs, grass, like in that area in combination with uh, infiltration systems that are working with the stormwater management relative to the building. One of the interesting components of this project is uh, the introduction of, uh, like what Brian said, the green infrastructure elements that are along the sidewalks. And these are, these are um, planted areas that are going to make the space look much greener than it is now. So it'll be less of a uh, paved looking area and much more lush and green. Uh, if you look kind of closely, at those, maybe zoom in just a little bit on one of those um, cells and we can just sort of talk a little bit about what that's doing. Um, so one of those bioretention areas would take the runoff from both the sidewalk and from the street. So there's little notches in the curbing and that would allow for uh, some infiltration to occur from the hardscaped areas into those green spaces that will water the plants that'll keep the water on site and lessen the burden on the uh, stormwater dra uh, drainage system that's within the city. Within those planting beds, uh, we can plant trees, grasses, shrubs, low shrubs and, and the sort. And you can see that we can even have some benches and things uh, nearby uh, for, for the streetscape. And then of course the yellow uh, symbol over there would be a street light. The way that these would be designed would be to be offset from the uh, street so that it wouldn't impede any parking. Uh, with this particular arrangement, the sidewalk would extend up to the face of the parking structure. So you can see the big black line is the lot line, but there would be a clear space there for the sidewalk to continue. And also a clear space between the curb line of the paved area of the road and the, and the green infrastructure element so that people can enter and exit vehicles without losing parking spaces associated uh, with these components. Um, I think we can zoom out just a little bit, uh, Brian, and we can just kind of see that we're, so we've got the pocket park, we've got plantings adjacent to the building and the parking deck where, where we can get them in. As we go around the corner to Cabot Street, um, the newly configured pedestrian way allows us some space for green areas. And then the same concept runs down the side. So what's really important to consider is not only would the streetscape be animated, but it will be much more uh, lush. It'll, it'll be sort of an oasis relative to what's there now uh, with trees, shrubs, plantings, and it will help ease the burden of stormwater management uh, in the city in the city stormwater system, uh, which, which I think will be a benefit to both the, you know, to the city and to the appearance of what we have on the site here. Uh, one other component that we're looking at doing with the trees, a little bit of a detail that we like to do with street trees is the inclusion of structural soils underneath the tree pits. So if we zoom in on maybe the uh, Merrimack street, street trees a little bit, we can see that um, maybe it's not quite on that plan, but that, those, those would be a tree grate. And within the area underneath the sidewalk, we have it noted on the landscape plan that I think you have our designated areas, which would contain structural soils underneath the new sidewalks. 
which enable uh, a much greater soil volume capacity for the street trees. And that will help them thrive because there won't be the soil compaction that's typical of street trees uh, that prohibits or, or inhibits their growth over time. So we're looking for really thriving, um, lush, green, landscaped street level uh, that also has green infrastructure benefits. I think that's about it. Uh, so, do you want to um, maybe just jump in and, and touch base on the, the comment letter that we received from um, CCD? I, I think we have everything relatively answered uh, in terms of, of what DPD staff had, had commented on. Uh, well, I mean, I, I guess I can I can run through it really quickly. Um, so there were there were uh, it looks like eight comments from DPD staff. Um, a couple of the first comments were uh, with respect to architecturals, and uh, obviously we've uh, we've addressed those. So we had a, a draft set of architecturals that went with the original um, submission, and and what you have uh, what was presented this evening is a much fuller. Um, developed uh, architectural plan. So I think those, those are um, those answer uh, kind of those questions. There was a comment regarding transportation, and we've done the analysis again pre COVID levels of 1200 average uh, peak hour trips on Merrimack Street and, and Cabot Street at that intersection, and we're proposing less than 100. Uh, so uh, a less than 10% increase. And then again, a key point of transportation is the fact that we applied for that One Stop Mass Works application, $1.7 million as a direct um, uh, kind of funding uh, mechanism from the state to the city of Lowell to, to improve both of these intersections. Um, there, uh, there was a question about landscaping and James could a great job kind of stepping through exactly what our our, our thought process is, is and how this project is really um, transforming the block, if you will. Uh, it, it's a comprehensive streetscape um, as well as landscaping. Um, and there was a question about uh, trash and, and trash is in the commercial building is maintained within the building and it'll be roll up guards. And then there's a dumpster that's indicated on the upper deck for, for the residential um, building as well. Um, you know, with that said, I, I think we've addressed all of those, those comments. Um, if there's anybody else from the team that would like to add, uh, otherwise we're, we're here uh, to answer any, any questions. Brian, can I just ask a question? I know you went over to landscaping. But at one point they said, um, I think it's 4A, they talked about maybe a maintenance agreement or because some might be on city property or will that be all on, on site? Nope, uh, so it, there is gonna be a kind of a reciprocal easement um, okay. as part of the, where the, the, the uh, pocket park is actually, that will be held within the easement for public benefit as well as there's landscaping and sidewalks that are on the private outside of the right of way um, that'll be held within that easement as well. So we're we're trying to uh, make sure that the uh, the public has access to these features and, okay. and maintenance will be maintained by the okay. developer. We had conversations with DBD um, about who's gonna who's gonna maintain these things and and um, it, it will be part of the the management program. Okay, and so the so you would do the easement. Okay, thank you. Anything else from um, the applicant? Anybody else? Yes. I think that's everybody. Attorney Martin, anybody else want to speak? Um, no, Mr. Chip. Just one thing. I think in the presentation, um, there was some mention of retail on the uh, first floor of the office building, but, but there won't be any retail in that, that building. And that's part of the relief we're seeking. The retail is on the uh, resident, residential building. The first floor of the office building will be 
offices. We don't anticipate, you know, a banking use or a branch use. There's a branch right across the street. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So if there's nothing further from the applicant at this point in time, I'll open the meeting up to the public. Um, anybody uh, would like to speak in favor of this project? Anybody in favor? In favor? In favor? Hearing none. Anybody in opposition? In opposition? In opposition? Hearing none. This time I'll turn it over to any of the questions or comments from the board members. Mr. Chamber, Mr. Yes, Chairman, I just want to say I've been wowed by a wonderful proposed project. They've done everything I conceived them to want to do. So I am all for this project. Thank you, Bob. Mr. Chairman. Yes, I, Mr. Fischett. Uh, if I may, and I, Bob, you said that with enthusiasm because we have some perspective on the prior project that was presented on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So certainly uh, uh, this has come a long way. And uh, I, you know, I credit the, uh, the architect as well as, uh, unfortunately, for some reason, it's gotten twisted. But in, uh, in the planning world, for some reason, the word character is a problem now. But you've actually taken the character of the buildings and the physical space and incorporated that into your design as far as how it integrates into what the city of Lowell looks like uh, in that neighborhood and, and, and leading into the downtown. So uh, you're to be commended uh, for that. And obviously the influence of the, of the local people involved in the project uh, obviously uh, provides guidance for that as well. So uh, I certainly uh, compliment you on that. And I, I look forward to what Sinead may have to say uh, on, on, the, on the design, but I, I, I really, uh, uh, I like what I see there. Um, on the, I, and I have to confess, I, you know, the landscape plan that was showed here, I don't believe I, I remember seeing that. So, um, and, and I have, um, you know, I like the way it's incorporated into the, the video that we saw. Uh, I would just ask, obviously, this is going to have to be worked out and finalized with DPD, but certainly the intention for the, by the applicant, I imagine, is to follow that as much as possible uh, based on what was presented, but certainly would want to see that final plan reflect that. Um, and I'm assuming the professionals are looking at that. There's no issues with ADA on the sidewalk or how that's designed. I would imagine that's that's all incorporated into the design. Uh, again, that's the first time, I, I may have missed it from what was uploaded, but I, it's the first time I see that color photo of, of uh, the landscape plan. Um, on the, uh, my question on the, um, on the 1.7 million that uh, application that was submitted, um, I guess my concern is if the application is not approved. Um, and, you know, not having the benefit of a, of a traffic engineer here in the city of Lowell, and I can appreciate uh, your traffic analysis. I didn't see any traffic analysis. I don't know, again, if I missed that as well. Um, but, um, you know, the, the, uh, that building on the corner of, uh, of uh, Cabot in, um, uh, in Merrimack, as well as Cabot in Market Street, um, obviously the improvements that you could be made uh, with the awarding of the grant would be extremely helpful. Um, I know Fran, uh, if you could uh, comment on, on DPD's position on that, I know in, in the comment memo, um, it does suggest that, um, you know, that, that, that it would be, it would warrant a more comprehensive study of those intersections. And I just, from DPD's perspective, uh, I think if the grant is awarded, I think that takes care of any issues, but uh, just my concern is what if it's not awarded? Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, that's something that I've thought about as well. Um, I know that traffic studies have been required for projects that are much smaller in scale than this one. So, um, and have warranted traffic improvements, smaller projects. So 
I don't know how that would work, but uh, we definitely feel like the scale of this project warrants some some improvements. Trying to think of the best way to address that. Um, Because un unfortunately, I will tell you, I haven't been exactly pleased with the traffic studies we've received as a result of trying to make adjustments with COVID. Um, and that's been difficult as well. Uh, and I, and I, I some, uh, some concern with those. Um, any thoughts from the applicant if in fact the application is not approved? Well, I mean, I, I think, Mr. Chairman, if I could, could the, uh, so obviously a million seven is a lot of money. We don't have an extra million seven in the, in, in the budget here uh, to make signalization improvements. Um, I think, you know, the landscaping and some of the sidewalk things, um, maybe some of that could be done in any event. I mean, as to traffic, I would just say, um, you know, we're below the MEPA thresholds uh, here, even as improved. Um, and, you know, we, we had a significant traffic problem with this site. Uh, some of you that have been on the board uh, will remember, you know, there was a drive up window uh, at Jean Doc Credit Union. Uh, oftentimes traffic would back out onto Cabot Street, up the hill, around the corner of the market, would really uh, tie up both the um, Market Street and Merrimack Street intersections with Cabot. So, so that's been removed and, and we don't, envision anything like that we you know we've put separate entrances now on merrimack and market there is no entrance on cabot where you know there's not much area for queuing um there's no retail operation right i mean the traffic's going to be people that come to work in the morning and go home at night uh same thing with the residential piece i mean these are people that are going to be living there obviously some in and out during the day but um we really don't see that this is going to overburden the intersection. Um, you know, if we had to do a study, I, you know, I guess that's something we would, we would entertain, but, uh, you know, we, we needed to show good faith um, progress toward permitting to succeed in the mass works application. So I don't, you know, to have the project conditioned on signalization improvements, I just don't think, uh, would, it would make the project not feasible to do. Um, but we're certainly, you know, we know we have to comply with the stormwater management, the infiltration, all that sidewalk uh, work, you know, is, is something we're gonna have to figure out whether we get the grant or not. Um, but, you know, signalization, I just don't think the project can afford to carry, carry either one of those intersections. And here's the, I can appreciate the fact that the master works uh, grant was for $1.7 million. The thing is, without even a, 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 a traffic study, there may be some mitigating traffic measures that do not come anywhere near that cost. Um, but unfortunately, we don't, we don't know at the moment. And that's, um, that's always a challenge uh, currently, again, not having a traffic uh, engineer on staff. And um, quite frankly, as we're trying to deal with this, we're, we're trying to see traffic engineering firms make adjustments for, for COVID as well. Um, then the uh, also on the, uh, Fran, I didn't see any comments from Stormwater um, in, in, as well, in, at all. Did, uh, did we get any comments from, uh, from stormwater on the project? Um, we didn't get any comments from stormwater, but they have been connected directly with the applicant and the applicant and the stormwater team have been working toward obtaining a stormwater permit through the stormwater department. So they, the applicant understands what the standard is that they need to meet, but um, they didn't issue any comments to me. Right. So they've been working sort of directly with one another the side okay, okay. Well, once again um you know i think it's a it's a it's a great project it's uh i think it uh, i think in the narrative it, it it alludes to the fact that it really does um meets the spirit of the master plan 
just to the applicant, uh, Attorney Martin, uh, the, is the intent on the residential units to be condominiums that are sold or are they intended to be uh, rentals? The, the intention is to have owner uh, uh, units, condominiums that are sold. Okay. Um, again, there's, there's a subsidy program where in Q4, uh, that makes that a lot easier to do that we don't have in hand yet, but that is our plan. Good. No, I, I want to thank everybody for paying attention to what some of the issues were the, the last time when, uh, when a project was being proposed to the site. And uh, I, I think this really, I love the parking uh, solution. That was a, an issue. There's no uh, public parking garage in that section of the city that really, you know, meets the distance requirements. So you've actually provided it on site, which is really to come up with this much uh, uh, space of retail office in residential and be able to provide on-site parking in the downtown area is really something special. So uh, I congratulate you there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vachette. Any other board members? Mr. Chairman, I just have um, a couple of comments and a sure. question. Absolutely, Ms. Gavin. Um, I would echo Jerry uh, Jerry's comments that I just think it's a really great proposal. I think it will be a wonderful improvement um, to that area. And I'm really impressed by the work, the presentation and the work done to date and working with the city and um, going after that state grant for the infrastructure improvement. So I'm really excited by all of that. Um, I, my questions were, um, are the brother sister building and the parking lot um, anticipated to be constructed as one project at the same time? Yes, sir. All right, this is Will Susie. Is that yet? All right, this is Will Susie. Yes, I do plan to build them both at the same time. The parking garage or the parking level on the tail end of the project. Yes, simultaneously. Thank you. Um, and I was also wondering, um, what about the mechanical and electrical equipment that will serve um, both of the buildings? I was just curious where it will be located. If it'll be on the roof, it'll be if it'll be visible on site, or if it'll be um, somewhere with, more within the building. Uh, most of it will be on the roof. There'll be uh, some transformers. We're still trying to get a hold of uh, National Grid to coordinate things with them. But the mechanical, the condensers, and things of that sort will be on the roof, behind a blind of some kind. So behind a screen or something, so they won't. Exactly. That's correct. Is it helpful for me to pull up some slides just so that when you're speaking to things, you can just have a visual? That's acceptable. Thank you, Steve. I think that this is a parapet that that you're just referring to. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's extended up, and actually, there's a better perspective that just kind of shows that was something that we developed that that piece, just part of the architecture. But really, the idea was they would veil things that would be on the roof, equipment, so forth. So you can tell by the ground level view, you just can't see, there's, there's no way to see any any of the equipment that you might envision up there. It's just not, it wouldn't be visible. Almost That's really helpful. Thanks for pulling that <laughs> okay. up. I think okay. it was so, so well integrated that uh, I missed it. Okay. <laughs> um, but thank you. That's really, that's really great to see. Thanks. Okay. And then um, I was just curious what that, I know you talked about kind of a large scale masonry unit that looks like brick, but what is the material um, on that, on that top floor? It's a uh, fiber cement. Clapper, clapper okay. type siding. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, th those are my questions and the comments. I'm just overall really impressed with the massing and the scale, and I think the landscape is really successful and kind of um, almost hiding a few of the items that I think that the planning staff brought up about maybe a blank wall along Cabot Street because of the change in grade. But I think that what you've done with some of the detailing and landscape along Cabot Street and along the parking lot um, make it a real success. So thank you for uh, your presentation. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Shay. <clears throat> Anybody else on the board have any comments, questions? Uh, Chairman, I can. I yes, have, Caleb. Yeah. Oh. Um, I I guess 
I, I haven't heard about um, the applicant addressing uh, about loading. I just want to ask, uh, I understand there is no more retail there, um, but um, is the residents have a specific area where they can move in and move out? Can I, uh, can I uh, pull up my screen, Stephen? You want to pull up your screen? That's fine, you get it up here now anyway. Uh, can okay. you go to the second floor? So this on the second floor. This is the ground floor, second floor. So basically the top deck of the parking garage is all for residential parking. And this is where all the uh, condo units will start. So any unloading or, you know, if people are moving is all gonna come through this lobby up here. It will be completely off the street. Um, there's no reason for them to use the main lobby on the first floor to try to move furniture or anything in because the units all start on the above the podium. So, and the parking garage will have H20 loading, so it'll be able to handle larger trucks coming through there. Um, the most the inconvenience is going to be, it may be to some of the residents that might be parked there if a moving, you know, van has to temporarily park behind some of the spaces, but that should be easily coordinated between the the residents, you know, if they've got to park for 20 minutes or whatever, they unload anything and then move vehicles. Right. I think there's a visual there that can help just there. Uh, there. Oh, anyway, let me just go back. I'm sorry. Here. <coughs> Upper parking deck. Mm -hmm. And then with Donna saying that they come through here and probably park here. And this is an upper lobby. That's just for residences. So the, the moving trucks would be off the street. Great. Um, since you're putting this out, uh, another question I have. Uh, well, first of all, I want to again uh, I echo the other members' um, uh, appreciation on the architectural detail. I, I really enjoy the uh, presentation as well as the rendering uh, in the video. So great job with that. Thanks. Um, I now I understand that parking structure may usually don't get the love, but uh, <laughs> um, have 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 there been any consideration? I, I know you mentioned about the privacy screen on the um and this and the top of the uh, parking structure of I guess that will be the uh, the the end of it um, facing Market Street. Um, I understand there is it will be green greeneries in front of it, but um, I mean there is a continuous um, concrete wall. So um, have there been any consideration of like what might some elements or some uh, some type of features that that can um, kind of liven up that side. I think right now the um, we need to get into those details. We really haven't. Parking garage has kind of been a little bit flagging behind. But as you can see, Steve and I discussed uh, you know trying to use against where the apartments are would be solid panels to prevent any headlights from directly going into the units. And then on the street side, um, we'd be trying to use more of an open uh, trellis type uh, condition there. I think once we determine exactly where that um, level is and where the grades are, um, we have a little bit more work to do to decide how to treat that concrete, whether we do something with stamped concrete to add some design to it, or we continue that uh, metal panel um, over the concrete. So I think the intention is to do something along that area, but it, it won't be plantings because it's just no area to put those plantings there. So we'll have to do something with that face of the concrete to uh, aesthetically make it, you know, palatable. Certainly. And I under, understand certainly there is a cost consideration, but I think stamping might be a good idea too, even without color, but with texture, I think that that, Correct. That was that was the thought. Yeah. Is that you know, again, right now we're looking at a you know a precast type structure. So, you know, those panels that uh, go on that side would you know be able to add that to that when it's formed. Um, you know, and there's also a durability standpoint. You know, we, attaching you know metal to that mm -hmm. may not be as durable. Um, you know, it, you know where it's available for somebody to touch or or to get hurt on on the metal. Um, that would be just applied over the concrete. So. I, I certainly appreciate that. I'm sure the residents across the street will appreciate that too. I, I've put, yeah, I'm, I'm especially concerned because we, you know, there are a lot of people who live across from the street. Um, so um, thank you for for paying attention to that as well. Um, Chairman, that's all the question I have. Uh, I think the last comment is that I also um, echo. Uh, 
Mr. Fischett's comment about the um, transportation study. Uh, I think it would be great um, and, uh, if the applicant and the city will uh, secure the, the grant funding. And I hope that's the way to go. But uh, we knew we don't have our way. What if um, that doesn't work out? So um, we'll, I'm sure we, we'll discuss as a board on that one when we get to the con conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Caleb. Just one quick note about this, this, this elevation. So this is my interpretation of the landscape design. I'm sure James has a much nicer idea about what it's gonna look like. So I apologize. That's just, that's an architect's interpretation of his plan. So I'm sure it's gonna look much nicer. So I apologize for <laughs> this disaster of like these weeds and shrubs and things. So I'm sure it's gonna be much nicer than what I'm showing. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, Russell, any comments? I think we heard from all the board members so far. Um, no, I, thanks, Chairman. I was just going to mention I was going to thank the applicant for uh, the thought and time put into the street trees and making improvements on all um, three sides of the streets. Um, but I think the other members of the board have covered pretty much everything that I either had questions about or wanted to make comments on. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so basically, um, I think this project is, uh, looks, looks very, very well. Um, very importantly is the parking. Um, the parking, I believe, makes the project. Uh, the previous projects we had in the past that came before us didn't have the parking. That was a big issue. Um, but I like how you did your architectural design. I think the place is going to look um, really nice when it's completed. Uh, I like the way how you um, bump things out on the architectural design and broke things up. So it's not like a, you know, just a straight pattern. Uh, and I think it's going to come along really nice. But the parking, I think, is definitely what I was very, very pleased to see that you had the parking on site. Um, um, like we say that um, property we wanted to get developed for one, for period, one period of time. And I think this would be going to be an excellent project when it gets completed. Um, so I wish you all and I applaud you. It looks great. Thank you. Yeah. Any of the board, any of the board members have, any, have anything follow up? If not, what we're looking for is we need a motion for a site plan, and then we need three motions for three special permits. Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, Fran, um, Gage Fran, Fran here for a second. Um, Fran, I'm just trying to think of some sort of a contingency here. If, and again, I understand we're not going to the applicant looking for $1.7 million. But if that application does not come through, uh, I'm just trying to think of some sort of contingency. I, I just don't think, I think it's irresponsible and we have a responsibility as serving on this board, it's a fairly sizable project and we have two main intersections and we have comments from the planning staff saying that they, you know, it, it does warrant some, some um, uh, attention. Uh, I, I just think it's, it's, um, it's incumbent upon the board to, to address this. So I'm just trying to think of, of a way that it works for everybody. There's so many good elements about the project, but this is something that I don't think we can just um, ignore. So I'm just trying to think of a uh, post approval solution if in fact the uh, mass grant does not come through. And, I, 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 and I'm assuming, you know, I, and I, I don't know anything about that application and what the criteria is to be selected. And I, I, you know, does it mean that the intersections uh, meet certain warrants where something should be done? Uh, or you know, it sounds like it takes other improvements into consideration beyond the signalization. So I don't know, Fran, I, if, if it could shed a little light on that. I'm just trying to come up with something that um, at least we would have uh, contingency in place here to look at those intersections. Yeah, um, it's really difficult, as you know, because we don't have a traffic engineer, so we don't have someone who can issue their recommendations as a professional in that field. Um, I was told by the DPD director that um, well, our, our former DPD director that um, if the planning board or any of the land use boards um, feel that a project may require transportation improvements that the applicant would 
need to fund the traffic analysis um, to identify what improvements, if any, would need to be made. So I think that that would apply here. Uh, and like you have said, it probably wouldn't amount to $1.7 million, the recommended changes, but just having someone, a, a traffic professional look and identify the critical things that should change to accommodate this uh, level of development uh, at these intersections and recommending those changes. Um, if, uh, <clears throat> Jerry, a friend, if something like, um, you know, the applicant to work with DPD for any grants towards signalization or towards any um, improvement for traffic flow in the neighborhood, something of that nature, would that cover it? Um, because I know I believe the grants that that's uh, done with the city is that right as well, Fran? They'd have to work with the city as well. Yes. Because it's a public street, right? Um, so I mean, any way we could phrase it that the applicant would work with the city towards those grants, um, signalization, and uh, any traffic improvements that may be recommended um, by the city and our state. Not on the city, just the city. That's right. There's no state road. Yeah. Anything by the city, well, I mean, through the grant, I mean, would you whoever they get a grant from? Um, and that way, if we did get a traffic engineer on board, if they come up with some recommendations, maybe the applicant would be willing to work with them. So, Mr. Chairman, um, this is Bill. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think we certainly would be willing to commit to work with DPD on, on studying the traffic, right? Sure. I mean, I, I think that's, uh, you know, we've, we've had, as, as Brian said, we had some preliminary discussions with some traffic people. And, uh, you know, if we need, if the grant is not successful and you want us to look at the traffic, uh, we're certainly willing to commit to that. But I, but I don't think we could, and we couldn't live with a condition that requires signalizations of, of the intersections. If, if, if the grant doesn't come through, we're just right. not going to be able to do that. So. Certainly a condition that would look at the traffic, uh, we'll cooperate with DPD staff, um, you know, in that regard is, is fine. We're, we will likely be doing that anyway. Um, but again, it's, it's really gonna be on the, on the grant proposal for the signalization. Yeah, I, I understand that. that. And I'm just saying that way you'd work with the city, you know, towards that grant. I understand um, that, you know, we can't foresee what would happen in the grant, obviously you would apply for those and hopefully they work for the better. Um. Well, the point, Mr. Chairman, is, is even when we did the, um, the high school off of Middlesex Street, I mean, it was $30,000 that was used to uh, work on the signalization at the Rural Bridge. Uh, you know, okay. we just, we, we just, we're blind here. We don't know what, what if anything should be done. And, and, and uh, that's, that's, um, again, not to take away anything from the project, but as we sit here, we have a responsibility and I just, we don't have any information. I, I, I that's, that's, that's my point, Mr. Chairman. Is, uh, Chairman, I, I may want, want to ask a question. Sure, go ahead, Caleb. So, uh, I wonder if the city or the applicant already have some ideas of how the signalization might be improved, what needs to be improved, like, um, or, or th those are questions that to be asked as part of the grant funding. So the, the, as a part of the grant, right, we, our, our team looked at kind of future proofing these intersections, if you will, and it was brought to our attention to, um, um, look at these. That's why. That's why the one stop was filed on behalf of the city. Um, the the future proofing, if you will, is, is new signal arms and updated cabinets, as well as is obviously uh, the bump outs at the intersections um, to create uh, more pedestrian friendly sidewalks and crosswalks and whatnot. Um, so I think I, I, I think we've, we've kind of done that. Um, that, that so out of the 1.7 million, 1.3 is specific to uh, the intersections. 
and and four hundred thousand is, is landscaping and, and stormwater improvements within within the right of way. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, well, uh, that's certainly our helpful information. Uh, I think my my um, kind of my follow up question would be like, what you know, in this in that case, what if the signalization cannot be improved? I would wonder like uh, if. If only the streetscape are improved. I, you mentioned about future proof. Like certainly that would be the most ideal case. But can the? I think what's Jerry asking is also like, can the current? A question will be, can the current intersection handle um, the? You know, even handle the traffic uh, post development, even without um, investing that money, and that that. That's, I think, it will be the key question because if the state is not giving it, nobody is, you know, or or at least the applicant won't come up with the entire amount. Well, if I could speak to that, I mean, the the need exists now, right? I mean, again, this project, we've said in, a, in our preliminary counts, will add ten percent of the volume to that intersection. So. Um, I just don't think it should be on this project or this developer to complete that signalization. Uh, in, in my mind, we're, we're improving it from what existed when the bank branch operated. Um, so we're, we're all for working with the city, we're all for improving it, but this project can't, can't be the catalyst to carry the signalization of that intersection. It, we're not contributing that much in addition to the project as it exists. Now, you know, if the city needs us to study that, point out, you know, possible solutions short of signalization. Uh, we're all we're all in for that, uh, and we live with a condition that the board crafted that states that. Um, so, you know, we're we're happy to study, get information, and make things better. But, you know, I think th those of us that go through there every day know know it can be a problem, and. We don't think this project contributes significantly more uh, than what exists already. Uh, Brian, if I could have clarification, the 400,000 for landscaping from that grant, are you counting on that for what was proposed here this evening? Uh, it, is part, it is part of the, the, the One Stop Mass Works application. I think regardless, we got feedback that we need to do landscaping. And even if this grant is not um, approved by the state and funded, we still have to repair all the sidewalks. We still have to institute some kind of, of screening, um, not uh, unlike what we were talking about on the Market Street side, a combination of, of the, gara uh, the garage concrete base. Um, so we need to do that regardless. So, but like the, the, the landscape, planting we saw and if 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 this does not this grant does not get approved would that be something you'll be coming back to dpd to modify and in other words did you incorporate that into th this landscape plant we saw here this evening uh yes yeah, so we we would be looking to to modify um kind of our proposal and 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 still be able to hit those critical items that were of concern um, mm -hmm. For the residences across Market Street, making sure that the streetscape was um, was up, up, updated and, and, and more cohesive, I, I think there's going to be a middle ground. Right now, we we have a very uh, high level um, plan um, as a part of that grant application. Uh, we we may be looking to to kind of pare things back while still addressing um, you know what was represented here. So boy, there's actually kind of a lot riding on that on that grant, and uh, um, because it's a great visual we have here this evening, and I know you'll try to keep the spirit of it. But four hundred thousand dollars is, I understand, an awful lot not to have in the budget to, to do that if it doesn't come through. Okay. We'll start a GoFundMe page. <laughs> Put me in for ten dollars, Will. <laughs> ten dollars. <laughs> Better than that. Oh <laughs> uh, no, it's a great project. Don't get me wrong; it is an absolutely fantastic project. 
It is. Uh, you know, when, when somebody hires you to do a job, you have a responsibility. And the same, you know, we have responsibility as, as a land. I've got confidence we'll get the grant. I'm trying to balance it's that. Positive. And we'll have to do something. If we don't get it, we'll do some kind of landscaping and repair the sidewalks accordingly. Right. And we will not touch the intersection for the, you know, for the traffic signal. Right, right. I'm just, I'm trying to come up with a condition. You know, I was, <laughs> in my past life, I never liked conditions that weren't real conditions. Um, you know, you, you, you make, it makes, makes it look like you addressed it, but you really didn't. So I'm just trying to find a way that post-approval, we, we've, we've, you know, allowed some opportunity to address perhaps, um, I mean, I think we've all acknowledged there's some challenges with the intersection. So there's some low level mitigating uh, measures that could be taken. Uh, and then obviously we'd have to address, you know, any revisions to this landscape plan would have to come back before the planning board at BPD, you know, because it's a, a fairly large departure from what's what's here this evening. So uh, I'm just trying to come up with something that I think is, is adequate and appropriate. Um, and it's a bit of a challenge at the moment. So just, uh, <laughs> to the applicant, uh, uh, Attorney Martin, if if uh, we were looking for a uh, a traffic study with at least, uh, and we've had these before, they, they, where they, they give a level of, of of traffic mitigation, you know, to 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 what extent, obviously. You go the it's almost like an a la carte type of type of options for traffic mitigation. Um, as Mr. Chairman Jeffrey Dirk was probably the expert at that. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, to really, you know, so so what are some of the minimal things that possibly could happen? Um, and understanding that, you know, you can't you can't um, uh, overhaul those those entire intersections, and that's not the intention. Um, but, you know, to have, if in fact there are some uh, mitigating uh, traffic calming measures or, or, or signalization uh, adjustments that could be made that would be uh, somewhat minimal, I, I think for a project this size, I, I just think it would be appropriate. So, so we would, uh, as I understand, we'd commit to fund a study. Yeah. And then implement. Um, I you know, implement what? I mean, anything sh uh, short of signalization. I, I guess I what I, I think uh, Jerry might be possible is, you know, if the grant's not approved, right? The applicant would commit to conduct a study and then work with DPD staff to implement reasonable. Yep, yep. I think we lose the attorney. Did we just lose Attorney Martin? <laughs> I think he was in the middle of a sentence there and we lost him. Oh. I think, right? I think yeah. he's off my screen. Off my radar, as they say. Yeah, yeah. Mm, hopefully, he can come back on. In the interim, Brian, you, you, you heard what Attorney Martin was saying <clears throat> and where he was going with that. Um, yeah, sure. Can you comment on that? Or do you have any thoughts on that? Or? Sure. So what, what I think he, the direction he was going in, right, was a condition that regardless of the grants um, being funded or not from the state, that we would commit to doing a traffic study and then working with city staff to implement reasonable upgrades, whether it's retiming of this, the existing signal, signals or potentially um, doing some other aspects like these these traffic calming measures 
uh, of the bump out to the intersection. Find find some simple middle ground um, to be able to 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 do or at least put our best foot forward um, to to make the situation better. Yeah, like any type of mitigation towards the traffic. Yeah, I know. I like the. I think that's. I think that's the solution. I think that's that's. Uh, I think Bill, we we solved it all with you gone. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it out when I when I when you I said. did. Yeah. No, you put you put you put out the. I think what what would work would get us to where we want to be, and then Brian just kind of uh, echoed that. So. Well, he's smarter than me anyway, so go with what he. <laughs> No, I think uh, I, I think that would I think that would address it uh, uh, in an appropriate way. I really do. <clears throat> Having said that, Mr. Chairman, um, I know you're looking for some motions. Is that correct? Yes. So we're going to need one for the site plan, and then th three uh, votes for each one of the three special permits that they're requesting. So we're going to need a total of four votes. All right. So the the special permits are more encompassing. So why don't we do one of the special permits and then we can adopt the other conditions? Sure. So relates. let me just start off. So for the special permit, we have the um, the first one would be the twelve point one e. All right, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion uh, to approve the special permit uh, with the uh, with following conditions um, that uh, the uh, applicant will get the, I guess, we'll get the uh, most difficult condition that we were just working here, uh, agrees to um, uh, fund a, um, and I, I guess, Brian, and for clarification, I don't know Bill's back on, I, I guess, Fran, if we get, if, if we get the Mass Works grant, that addresses Basically anything we could possibly think of, right? The two intersections, the the landscaping, right? My... I think so. I think the Mass Works grant covers all of okay. those. So what I would be looking at is if the Mass grant application is denied, then the applicant would fund a traffic study. Okay. So the condition would be if the Mass grants uh, application is denied. The applicant would fund a traffic study and agrees to work with DPD to implement reasonable traffic mitigation measures slash upgrades, such as timing of signalization and other recommendations that may be incorporated in the traffic study. Second, the um, Applicant will uh, work with a DPD, and I guess it would be the engineering department and in, in the law department for um, <clears throat> the establishment of an easement and management plan for the proposed landscaping. The applicant will, subject to finalization of the landscape plan, working with DPD. And I believe based on what I heard this evening, also um, subject to uh, final landscaping, or land, I'm sorry, uh, final lighting plan um, to be uh, work in conjunction with DPD. Applicant uh, would uh, also comply with stormwater mitigation requirements and I believe Mr. Chairman unless I missed in our final and also the final architectural um, um, elements of the project to be finalized uh, again working with DPD. Rain, do you have those conditions? Any questions for Mr. Fischer? I got them all, thank you. Okay, thank you. Just want to make sure we have clarification on that. Okay, so we have a motion on the, the floor to approve the first special permit for the 12.1 E. Do we have a second on that motion? I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Malovich. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes yes. Any opposition? 
Hearing none, that motion has been approved for the special permit for 12.1E. Now, the next matter will be the section 12.4B, and that's the retail operation uh, for greater than 5,000 square feet of gross floor area per establishment. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve incorporating uh, all of the conditions in the prior um, special permit approval. Okay, so we have a motion by Ms. Bichette with the same conditions as outlined in the first special permit. Do we have a second on that motion for special permit? I'll, I'll make a motion to approve. So uh, all board members in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none, that special permit has been approved. The last special permit would be for section 12.8B, which is, let me pull my chart up again. I think that's was, um, that's another one to do with the business of, or the professional uh, with the uh, office with gross floor area. So that's the third one, which is very similar to the previous one. Uh, so we have a motion for that one. So move, Mr. Chairman, incorporating okay. all of the conditions from the prior. Okay, so Mr. Vachette made the same motion with the same conditions. Um, we have a second on that matter. Second. Second by Mr. Malovich. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair, chair votes yes. Um, any, anybody in opposition? Hearing none. So those three special permits have been approved. Now the remaining vote we have would be for the site plan approval under section 11.4. Anybody have any comment on, uh, uh, um, I'm gonna make on a special permit. I mean, excuse me, on the site plan. I apologize, apologize. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to approve the site plan. Uh, once again, incorporating all of the conditions uh, that um, were in place for the special permits. Okay. Motion's made. Uh, I will second that motion. So we have a motion on the floor to approve the site plan and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any, any opposition? Hearing none, that motion is allowed as well. So all three special permits and the site plan have all been approved with condition by unanimous vote. Um, I wish everybody well. That looks like it's going to be a great project. Um, I think it's really going to help that neighborhood out there. And I tell you, I really enjoy looking at this site compared to what we've seen previously. So I give Jane Dye um, Credit Unit a, a lot of credit. Um, we always felt they've been a good neighbor. I'm glad they came forward and stuck with the site. And this really is going to help that whole neighborhood. So uh, congratulations to all your good good work. Thank you very much. All of you on the board. Thank you good very luck. much. Good Thank luck. You. Thank you. Um, excuse me, uh, Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, did you write down who seconded the final vote? I didn't catch that. The site plan review vote. The chairman did. I did. Tom, yep. Tom did. Yep. I did. Yep. I vote. I, I second one of the special permits in the site plan, and Bob, I think, uh, did the other special permits. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. Good luck with that. And we're moving along now. Mr. Chairman, if I just, I noticed Mr. Sure. Martin is back on Attorney Martin. I just want to thank you, Bill, uh, again, for uh, your input on, on finding a solution to that uh, emotion on, on uh, the traffic. So appreciate that. Well, uh, we have a good team here, and I, I think you'll be very happy with what we come up with in the end. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Attorney Martin. Good luck. We wish you all thank well you. in this. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay, moving along on the agenda, we have a, a request for a minor modification on two Prince Ave and one Markley Way. The applicant is seeking to modify condition of approval number five, which reads, the landscaping and fencing along the south side of the property where the site abuts all residential properties shall be completed by the month end of May, 2021 by replacing um, the month of May until August. May we hear from the applicant, please. Uh, 
Good evening, uh, members of the board. Uh, my name is Theo Kinnamans. I'm a senior principal with Stantec, um, representing uh, uh, the Markley Group. With me here tonight is also Luke Kipfler, Director of Construction of the Markley Group. Um, both Luke and I were in front of you a few times last, uh, last summer. Um, and that ended, culminated in a uh, site plan approval modification that was issued in, uh, on November the 8th of last year. Um, and as the, uh, our, uh, what the chairman just read, our uh, condition, one of the conditions in there was that we needed to have a fence and landscape constructed by the end of May. Um, that uh, has not happened. We are fully, uh, we're in construction at the moment. Um, since since we got the approval in November, we've been working diligently of getting uh, getting all the plans ready. Um, it was, you know, as as my letter states, it, it's over seventeen hundred uh, linear feet of fencing uh, that's custom designed, uh, custom designed footing. It's ten high, ten foot high fence with a uh, uh, a sound uh, barrier on it. Um, given the topography out on site, it's been uh, it's been quite the engineering job. Uh, we had a meeting with Fran and the building inspector to run through our uh, schematic plans in the middle of February, and so it's it's been an ongoing process. Uh, the project now has been awarded to a contract, a local contractor, which we 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 did our best to find a good local contractor, a local based contractor uh, to execute this project. And building permit has been issued. And as I said, uh, we have started, but given, given all that has been going on uh, over the last year and a half, um, this is where we are. Um, and while we didn't meet the condition, we did, want to make sure that you understood that we've been uh, diligently working on this and that we didn't want to just blow by the date and not not bring it up to uh, to you all that uh, um, that that was hoping to to have this finished uh, by the middle of August is what the what the projected date is at this point in time um, that's the other condition by the way the other condition that you uh, was an extension of uh, smokestacks uh, of diesel generators that we had at the uh, that we have on site. Uh, we have extended uh, the smokestack, so that that condition has been satisfied. It's just a fence that's uh, that's outstanding and ongoing. So I'm happy to entertain any questions. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um... Does anybody else want to speak on behalf of um, Maki Way, Makley Way, sir? Uh, no, no, this is okay. this is this okay. is it. Okay, so this is just a request for a modification. Um, any of the board members have any questions? I do know that a lot of supplies have been difficulty getting with uh, during the pandemic for um, a lot of the builders. I know a lot of them are set back waiting for supplies to come in. I know myself, yes. I had a fence put in last year and I had to wait an extra month for the materials. I didn't know if the guy was blowing me off, but he told me he was keep waiting each week and week week, and then sure enough, he had them. But each time and he said he had to check the truck to see if the stuff was coming. So I know a lot of projects have been delayed trying to get materials. So yeah, I that's 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 one hour our, our fence. And it's this is a custom made fence and it has been ordered and it's still about three weeks out for the fence to be delivered. In the meantime, we've been doing... Uh, okay. Some site prep. We've been doing some cleaning. Uh, we'll be uh, starting to put up uh, a retaining wall shortly. Um, but I mean, it's having not having the materials readily available has certainly played a played a role in this. Okay. okay. Anybody have anything to say? And chairman. Yes, uh, Caleb. I have a question. Sure. So, uh, Theo, um, what? Uh, so what's this current condition right now? Is some of the is we are just waiting for a fencing so that once they arrive they can put right in, or there is still some last bit of site work to done to be done. We we uh, contractor has uh, started with site some site prep, uh, removing of some vegetation, 
um, starting to build to do some earthwork. I think they uh, we we discussed the removal of a chain link fence, the existing chain link fence, last week uh, while I was on site. So there is they are prepping for the. Uh, uh, they're prepping for the fence to arrive, but once the fence arrives, the fence will will not arrive in panels. The fence will arrive in in pieces, so they will need mm -hmm. to uh, bolt everything together on uh, on site. Um, one one thing that I just forget uh, thing that I forgot to mention: um, we did instruct the uh, contractor to do uh, sort of the the easy work first, if you will, the high impact work, which is along Bourne Street and the neighbors that are along Bourne Street. Because um, if you remember, uh, that's where the water tanks are going. And that's that's was uh, the, the origin of all of this. Um, and in order for the water tanks to be screened, we want to have that fence. And so that's once the fence comes, that's where the contractor is going to start along Bourne Street and the neighbors there. Um, then there's some other fencing that, for instance, all the fencing that's currently in installed on Prince Avenue, uh, Prince Ave and, and just around the corner, it's already, uh, there is a, a high security fence already installed, um, but that actually will be have to be taken down and replaced by a, a, a sound screen wall. Same fencing material, also high security, but that includes a, 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 a sound screen. So it's there's a lot of work that's that's ongoing, but you know we want to make sure that the work that gets done sort of in order of where it has the most impact mm -hmm. to the neighbors and impact in a, in a positive way, where it has has the most screening for the neighbors. Understood. And uh, can you can you give also a uh, a report on where the water tank is right now in in terms of that work? Yeah, they started uh, digging foundations last week. Two foundations, as you remember, where there were two water tanks proposed. We only want to build uh, two foundations and one tank, and and the second tank might come at a later date. So uh, okay. is the is the first war Yes, I understand. I remember that. So right now you're looking at one of the tank, but preparing the foundation if there's right. a future need, and that's right, what we right. approved. Right. Um, but with the current schedule, and I don't know if water tank have material shortage either. So what's the timing with the water tank like actually going up? I don't know. I'm just looking at uh, Luke. Uh, Luke might have a uh, a better answer to that. Yeah, this is Luke Kipper with the Markley Group. Uh, they the the actual construction of the tank aligns pretty well with the completion of the fence. So we're expecting the tank to be actually operational and serving load uh, likely mid-September with the actual um, physical construction of the tank generally uh, in July and August. I see. So, well, that will be uh, some close timing, I will say. Uh, and I, I do hope that, you know, uh, since the purpose of that being completed early is to screen the water tank. So I, I hope that, you know, won't be won't be behind uh, you know, by, by, by much. I understand when construction goes up, then, then uh, it will take a while to, you know, to, uh, to clean things up and what else. So it will be nice to have the tank, uh, if, sorry, to have the fence to, to be up before, you know, the, the, the major piece go in for the water tank. But uh, thank you for the update. That's all I have, Chairman. Thank you, Caleb. Any of the board members, any questions? Anybody else have anything to say? No? Mr. Chairman, I'll comment um, just sure. that I think it's a, re a reasonable extension um, extending by about two and a half months um, from mm -hmm. the original anticipated completion. So um, I'm glad it's not say in November that they're just looking to push it out and sure. it might uh, closely align with the completion of the water tank. That's all, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, so first of all, I think what we'd have to do is decide if we believe it is a minor modification, so it's not a substantial and material change. 
And then if we did find that it is only a mod modification, then whether we would adopt the condition to extend the time period that they requested from the end of May till the end of August. Um, Mr. Chairman, I view it as a minor modification. Okay. Okay, so we have a <clears throat> motion by Mr. M Malovich indicating that he feels that this is a <clears throat> not a substantial or material change and is a minor modification. So we have a motion on that. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. So we um, all in favor, there's a minor change, say aye. 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 Any opposition? Aye. Any opposition? Hearing none, that minor mod, we have to prove that the request is a minor modification. Now the next request would be, do we want to make an amendment to the previous approved conditions to allow the applicant more time to put up the fence until the end of August of uh, 2021? Chairman, I will make a motion to uh, approve the uh, amendment to the condition that to extend the um, the uh, deadline of the uh, the fencing and landscaping to uh, is it the end of August or beginning of August. I, I didn't quite catch the request. Yeah, the, uh, the end of August. The end of August. Thank you. Okay. So we have a motion by Caleb to extend the request for the requested time period to the end of August. Do we have a second on that? I'll second that, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Second by Mr. Malovich. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair aye. votes yes. And any opposition? Hearing none, that modern modification has been approved. Good luck, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Moving along on the agenda, we have a pre-application discussion for 78 Middlesex Street. The applicant proposes to we developed the existing building into 26 unit housing development. When the project officially applies for approval, it will require site plan review from the planning board, a variance and special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals and approval from the historic board. Uh, this is a pre-application, so it's not a public meeting, public hearing, excuse me, it's not a public hearing and the board will render no decision on this matter at this time from informational purposes. May we hear from the applicant, please? Yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening, members Mr. Of the board, Geary. For the record, my name is John Geary from the law offices of Geary and Geary LLP, 32 Church Street, Lowell, Mass. I'm here tonight representing 78-80 Middlesex Street, LLC, which is the owner of 78 Middlesex Street. So with us tonight is Justin McFarlane, one of the, one of the principals of the LLC, uh, his partner, Joe Deganji, is has a conflict tonight, so he's not available. We also have uh, Brian uh, Godro of Hancock Engineers, the, the engineer on the project, and Monty French of Monty French Design Studios, uh, the architect on the project. I think it's worth uh, pointing out that Justin McFarlane has done a few developments in the city. Uh, he's currently working on the Carter, which is a uh, five-story new construction, just a block away from this property at 160 Middlesex Street, consisting of 20 residential units and commercial space on the first floor. That project's moving along well. He has also redeveloped a row of brownstones at the lower end of middle of uh, Westford Street, uh, which has been a great benefit and enhancement to that stretch of Westford Street. And Mr. Uh, McFarlane has also uh, redeveloped a single family home at 289 Central Street, right in the downtown area, which is uh, very unusual, but a, a fantastic project that came out great. Um, <clears throat> so together, Mr. M Mr. McFarlane and Joe Deganji have uh, extensive experience in uh, all, all levels of commercial and residential projects which should benefit this project and no doubt result in a, in a successful project. Uh, as the chairman mentioned, this is a pre-hearing, so it gives my client the opportunity to summarize the project to the board and hopefully get some valuable feedback so that we can uh, include any feedback in our final submittal for the uh, public, public hearing. So the application involves the redevelopment of 78 Middlesex Street, um, which is currently a three-story 
commercial building, most recently used as the fitness, as the club fitness center. Uh, it has been uh, vacant and run down for several years now. Uh, the applicant is proposing to redevelop the property into 26 residential units consisting of a mix a, of studio, one bedroom and uh, two bedroom units. The first floor, the, the applicant's proposing that the first floor will house eight units, the second and third floor, nine residential units each. The lower level will consist of a fitness area, uh, a refurbished pool area, uh, storage area for each unit, which also includes storage for bicycles. Uh, the area above the pool will be a cutout to create uh, an open air courtyard leading directly to the roof. The staff uh, comments inquired as to whether or not that uh, fitness area and pool area would be open to the public. They will not be. This is only for the use of the residents of this property. One of the obstacles that we have to overcome with this project is the fact that we have no off street parking whatsoever. Fortunately, the property is located in close proximity to several uh, city rural parking facilities and in close proximity to the Gallagher Transit Terminal. In addition, the applicant will be proposing micro mobility solutions in the form of shared bicycle and scooter programs in conjunction with his redevelopment of 160 Middlesex Street. So we hope that that will limit the number of vehicles that will um, be associated with the redevelopment of the property. In addition to the uh, site plan approval and the special permit that we need from this board, we, we will also need a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals for the lack of off-street parking on the residential side of the project. Uh, we also require a historic board approval. Um, the applicant has been working or has worked with Steve Stoll from the uh, historic board back in February and March. He had no, no um, issues with the exterior design of the property, but we do understand that we need, um, we need approval from the historic board. Uh, ultimately, the project, this project is another important piece of the puzzle to the redevelopment of this Middlesex Street corridor. This particular project will have a significant enhancement and impact to the immediate neighborhood, as well as the city in general. The project aligns with the housing choice and micro, micro mobility aspects of Lowell, of Sustainable Lowell 2025 and the City of Lowell Master Plan. We estimate that the project will cost approximately six and a half million dollars or result in a six and a half million dollar investment into this uh, particular project. So at this time, I'd like to turn the, the meeting over to uh, Mr. French who will review the, act, the architectural aspects of the project. And then Brian will review the site plan with the board. And then we're happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Um, so thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Gary. Thank you, John. Uh, this is Monty French. Um, thank you, everyone, uh, for giving us the time this evening. Is it okay if I go ahead and share uh, our drawings? Absolutely, sir. That, we find that very helpful. Thank you. Can uh, everyone see my screen here? Yes, sir. Great. Um, so as John mentioned before, the, the building itself, I think everyone must be familiar with it. It was previously used as a fitness center on all three floors. Um, the building itself is in pretty good disrepair, especially uh, the front facade on Middlesex Street. Um, so, you know, we have the opportunity to try and come in here and revitalize the project, reuse the structure, uh, and reposition it into a residential project is our goal here. Um, so kind of working with the existing structure, um, we are kind of working with the, 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 the lines and the proportions that were given to us by the structure. Um, you know, we looked at some of the historical photos, but none of that has been maintained through time. And actually a lot of it has been replaced by uh, fire and other damage and other renovation over time. So there's really no remnants of the previous uh, architecture that was in place here. Uh, so we tried to use uh, a design that kind of really worked with the regiment of the, of the structure and try to express that through on the facade. 
Uh, one of the great things about the structure is that we have really nice tall floor to floor heights. So <clears throat> some of these units will feel very gracious and uh, allow for a lot of good daylight. Um, so just starting with the exterior here along Middlesex Street, you'll see that we're proposing a brick uh, clad on the major part of the structure or the facade here. And then each of the windows areas are inset with fiber cement cladding and uh, tall window structure here. Uh, this is the lobby entry here, and we'll get into that in the plan. And then we do have a couple of units along the ground floor that are, have their outdoor space kind of screened with a fence and some green uh, shrubbery. Off to the side is the uh, pocket park. Uh, again, we'll look at that in the, park, in the, in the plan. So this is kind of our proposed architectural site plan that shows the pocket park off to the side. Uh, our entry here in the middle of the building and then the units kind of wrapping around. And you'll notice when we walk through the plan that we've created a courtyard in the building. Uh, this is currently not there, but we wanted to maximize the window wall, but because we've got uh, one side of our building up against another building, this is one way that allowed us to get more window wall, uh, just because the, the building is so deep, it doesn't really allow for good kind of unit depth. Uh, this, this afforded us the opportunity. And we also took that opportunity to reactivate the pool that's down in the basement uh, and give it some of that borrowed daylight um, so that it's not so dark down there. Um, so this is a plan of the basement, again, with the existing pool. Here, uh, we'll renovate and add a couple bathrooms here. Uh, the elevator comes down to the, to, the, to the basement level. And then we would provide uh, the 25 storage units over here, 26 storage units over here uh, for the tenants. And then we've got a fitness space and some mechanical space down here. Uh, this is the proposed ground level plan. Um, again, the entry here with the lobby, uh, elevator, courtyard, outdoor courtyard, open air to the sky. Um, and then you'll see that we've got an arrangement of studios, one beds and two beds in the unit, in the, in the building. The units along the front here, um, you know, they're pretty, pretty decently sized. I know that they're, you know, I think the smallest of the one beds is 630, but they go all the way up to 750 square feet. Um, but you'll see here that this is the outdoor space that these, these units get uh, along the front. Two bed unit back here on the corner. Um, Again, pretty decently uh, sized with a, just a little over a thousand square feet for two bed, which we felt was pretty generous. Um, tried to be open with a floor plan with islands or peninsulas, uh, dining room area or dining table area, living room, um, and everything else that you would expect in a unit like this with in-unit laundry, coat closets, uh, uh, master bedroom with ensuite, um, a lot of these units are designed with those things in mind. Um, again, I think all the units have in unit laundry. Um, Monty, if I may, before you move on, can, can you just elaborate on the outdoor space on those first, that intrigues me. Is that something that those units will be able to walk, like, like walk out to, or is that just a window? I can't tell if those are doors or windows out to the- No, yeah, I think we envision these as having a door and having a, a bench out here and a little bit of outdoor space so that if you wanted to either slide the door open and get some fresh air or sit out on the bench and with a plant and, and things like that, just to have a little bit of outdoor space. That's how, how intriguing is that? That's wild, oh, okay. And to provide a little bit of screening with uh, a lightweight fence and maybe some plantings. Yeah. 
Uh, again, moving up, the, the units typically stack as we go up the building, so I won't, uh, you know, go over everything again, but the front units do change up a little bit here. So these units become larger one beds, 725 square feet. And again, we try to arrange these so that all the living, common living areas along uh, the front facade. So that you've got more of the kind of activity along the front facade. Um, again, and you have to imagine that these have really nice tall ceilings and we're working on interior perspectives for these. So as we move into the next stages, we'll have some views of those things for you guys. Um, same, same sort of unit on the other side and then a smaller um, studio type unit, but it almost feels like a one bed. We've kind of laid it out so that it has kind of this privacy screen created by the coat closet. In all of these floors, we also created, you know, a glazed opening that overlooks the courtyard. Again, the idea is to pro provide as much daylight into the building and uh, the ability to kind of look down on the courtyard. We, we feel like that this is going to be a good quiet private space for the building and the people that live there. Um, another example of a studio over here that overlooks the courtyard. In some of the one beds, we were able to create what we would say, you know, a, a, a one plus space, a, a little bit of a study here. And in this particular um, one bed, we actually put um, we're showing double doors that would open up and allow all this daylight and very open feeling here. And then the, th the third floor is the same thing. Uh, a lot of the same units, same layout. The units would stack as they go up. <clears throat> and then uh, again with the facade, expressing the structure and this kind of rigor uh, of the opening layouts uh, with the brick cladding, the fiber cement, and then the high efficiency windows. Um, I guess I'll, I want to skip over to the, just so that you kind of understand, this is, these are elevations inside the, the uh, courtyard. And then this is the skylight down below is where the pool is. So hopefully if the project allows, we can actually have this as an operable skylight, but right now we're showing it as a fixed. Uh, to get, you know, allow, again, a lot of good borrowed daylight down into the pool area. So that's kind of, you know, that's where we've gotten with the project up to this point in a, in a pre-file stage, understanding that, you know, we need to kind of get something out there for people to digest. Uh, but you know, I think our understanding of the building and the condition that it's been over the last several years and what we were able to come up with, we feel like this is a good solution, both architecturally and, and just, you know, from an urban design standpoint, um, how, you know, we can revitalize this building and, and contribute to the neighborhood. Um, I, may I ask, like, can you can you touch a little bit more on page two? Uh, I'm sure Jerry might ask as well. Uh, is the landscaping um, conceptual in this stage, or are you just um, is a placeholder right now? And I also want to um, uh, to maybe some explanation what the L and the incline in the upper part means. Uh, loading. So I'll start with the last thing first. Uh, yes, th th this would be, um, I think we kind of were trying to provide something, but this just is too small of a lot to do any sort of parking. Uh, so, but we wanted to at least have a loading zone, uh, both for deliveries and people moving in and things like that. Uh, and yes, of course, the, 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 the landscape is very conceptual at this point. We know we need to do something and, you know, we wanted to get the dialogue start, started with you you folks and uh, move on from there. Thank you. I, I have a question about parking. So is it the developer's intention or the applicant's intention 
to purchase spots in the garage for residents or will it be residents responsibility to purchase spots in the most garage? most likely it will be the residents responsibility i'm not sure that the city is um is keen on reserving parking spaces in the garage any longer uh you know we will work with dpd on that issue and and see what their present feeling is but uh, you know with the amount of garages nearby I think that we'll make that the um, the tenant's responsibility, but we're still working out those details. Okay, thank you. So uh, those are apartments then, not condos? That's correct. I, okay. I, I believe they're, the intent is to be uh, held by the developer. I could, if I... Uh, I uh, just have a question, and I guess it's more globally on this micro mobility. Um, and I don't know how far out you are from having the other uh, project completed. Just curious, uh, Trini Gary, and maybe uh, Justin, uh, uh, Colin, maybe I'll add something. But it is uh, have you um, gotten a sense of? Um, do you have a list of tenants that are interested? Uh, in uh, in uh, moving into those uh, those units yet? Uh, just curious, because it is a new concept for the city, and uh, dying to see how that uh, how it is embraced. Uh, Justin, would you like Mr. to elaborate Ch on that? Yep. Yeah, Mr. Chairman and the board, uh, thank you for having us. Um, so, with regard to micro mobility, um, we. Uh, we we we're still in the construction. Uh, we're still under construction at 160 Middlesex. Uh, we do have uh, vendors, micro mobility solution vendors selected uh, for 160 Middlesex. What we're trying to do is uh, add the bicycle element at 78 Middlesex, so that you have people who perhaps are not familiar with scooters. You know they can use the bicycles and vice versa. Um, but what we did do is uh, when you know we initially proposed the project at 160, we discussed with uh, my tenants over at uh, 99 103 Westford Street, you know what sort of mobility solutions they would like to see, and the feedback was you know the scooters, the bicycles. Um, you know, the, the, the carts, that sort of thing, the, the, you know, shopping carts that would be available in, if they wanted to walk to the store. So that is what, that's how we came to, you know, uh, the conclusions that we did. We don't have tenants lined up at the moment um, to use them um, because we just don't have tenants yet, but um you know, we, uh, we feel as though, and, you know, in some of the other projects that we have in, uh, you know, Boston or Brighton, uh, where micro mobility solutions are readily available, they've been incredibly popular. Um, those aren't solutions that have been provided by us. Those are, you know, the blue bike, uh, Velo, um, but you know, those are, those are, those are utilized by our tenants all the time. So, you know, we'd like to implement those um, in mold. We think that it would be it would be a popular solution. Sure. No, I'm 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 eager to see how that uh, how that progresses. Uh, it is a relatively new concept for, for this community. Um, and, and did I miss what uh, you mentioned? Bikes is it, do you have bike racks uh, proposed in here? So the 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 um, the idea was to provide the tenant storage, which would also include, you know, bicycle storage. Um, we want to uh, have outdoor bicycle storage in the, uh, yes, yeah, in the courtyard area, and most likely the uh, the bicycle share um, access point would be in the courtyard. So you would have the enclosed bike share. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with them. You've seen them in Boston. Yes, I have the blue bikes that are. Yep, Ex yep. Exactly. That's where they would be located, so they'd be readily available. Okay. Were those were those actually diagrams of bikes in the storage uh, units? Uh, uh, yes. Is that what that was supposed to represent? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Very good. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
that. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate it. So if there's no more questions on the architectural aspect, we can have Brian go over the site plan. Sure. Uh, Monty, can you shift to the second page again? Perfect. So it, what you're looking at in terms of a, a site plan, basically the lot is uh, currently building and there's a small alleyway to the right hand side and that alleyway that's currently paved is going to be what's intended to create this green space, this pocket park, if you will. So um, in terms of stormwater management, we understand that we have to apply for a stormwater permit. Um, and our thought is, what what is what does stormwater look like as a part of this redevelopment? And because we're utilizing what is the current alleyway as, as green space, as, as recreation, um, we'll be looking to take the roof runoff and put it underground. So the city will have specific stormwater regulations where we're required to retain an inch of runoff in this area. And uh, it's our intention to be fully, fully compliant with that. So what, what are we doing? We're basically we're ripping out an alleyway, and we're putting back landscaping, and we're we're mitigating storm stormwater that's currently unmitigated um, by putting it underground and allowing for recharge infiltration. Um, and and that's basically the, the extent of the site. There's no no parking lot per se, as, as uh, Attorney Gary indicated. Um, micro mobility will be utilized uh, in lieu of car uh, parking spaces, but w there is a provision for the loading area, and that was uh, indicated by the, the kind of rectangle with an L at the rear. Um, and and also that's going to be where our, kind of our trash and our, our storage is. Um, so in a kind of in a in a broad um, scope where we're ripping out some pavement and we're installing landscaping and a, uh, a kind of a passive recreation area. Um, you know, with that said, I'm happy to answer any more detailed questions regarding, um, you know, our compliance with stormwater management. Brian, if I, if I just may, just looking at this, this um, site plan and I'm, I'm looking at photos that I took it's it's interesting because the, the there's fairly large trees which you show that are not they're on the abutting property. So just curious as you're designing this, it's kind of interesting, right? The abutter could take the trees down, um, and then change that whole look and feel of that. Uh, just I, I, I just just curious as to how you're viewing all of that. If I, if I may inter, if I may interject. Um, you know, I, I'd be, we're more than happy to add, uh, you know, trees, you know, especially if uh, the neighbor decides to take them down. Uh, I'm definitely an advocate for, you know, adding as much urban landscaping as possible so that, you know, if, if, if in the event something happens, sure. we would be more than happy to replace them and we'll, we'll most more than likely be adding to what is there now. Yeah. If you if you could work with DPD before you come to us with a final plan, because that's just unique. It's just you know they're 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 fairly significant for that small site, uh, and yet they don't belong to the site. So uh, you know it's just uh, of course interesting. So, all right, just my comment on that. Thank you. I. I think it's really exciting. Um, it's exciting to see this building being revitalized um, in the near future. Um, my one question, it just really struck me about the plans, is the stairwell seem to be really close to each other. And I don't know if maybe the door separation um, gives you the distance that you need, but I was just, I wonder if Monty can speak to the egress a little bit of the, out of the building. Yeah, we, it definitely was a game of inches. Um, but maintaining the, the separation, uh, we, we were careful about make, making sure that the doors are remote. Um, there is no requirement that the enclosures themselves are remote, but the doors do need to maintain the remoteness and we've been pretty careful about that. 
Thank you. Thanks. I, I wasn't sure if those were existing stairways, um, but they did look, you know, they look really close, but I understand it's kind of a, a doorway game or a landing yeah. game, if you will. Yeah. Game you. of inches, yeah, certainly. <laughs> but I think it's overall a really exciting project. Thank you. Anything else, anything further from the applicant? No, uh, nothing further at this point. If uh, okay. any any further feedback from the board would be greatly appreciated so we can put together a, yeah. a, a great application. Um, I do like that open concept of the uh, courtyard area, how you're trying to get the light down in there and you know by, down by where the pool is, you know, trying to open that area up. I think that is uh, nice. Um, trying to get that in there, as you indicated. Yeah. How how big of a view would that be? Any idea, Brian? Do you know or Justin? Or that big courtyard? Uh, the courtyard itself is about it's a little over twenty feet wide. Okay. And almost seventy five feet long. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I can see a little better now. Okay. Yeah. Would uh, yeah. I think that we felt that that was appropriate. You don't want to get it too big and have yeah. You know, it was the appropriate size. Yeah, it's always good to have that um, open space. You know. Especially on the inside there, um, a mm -hmm. lot of privacy in that area. You know, mm -hmm. that looks nice. I would suggest that there be some tubs of planting in that courtyard. I know you can't plant them, but it would be in a couple of benches just so the the residents could have a place to sit and have some shade, although it... Yeah, it's like yeah. a sitting area, Bob, like? Yeah. Yeah, city area for people to hang out, uh, you know, or just feel the outside concept. Yeah, yeah. we're certainly, we're cer oh, excuse me, yeah, we're certainly, uh, you know, exploring ideas of having a sitting ledge along here and, mm -hmm. and having plantings that go along here to privatize these windows a little bit, but you know, those are going to be things that we need to flesh out over time. Um, I think those are going to be the major considerations is privacy and, but yeah. still allowing people to come down here and use it. Okay. Okay. I assume that there probably going to be children in this building. I don't know that for a fact, but the two bedrooms may have children. I wouldn't want to eat up too much of this space because the kids may want to play in there. And also, well, they have the outside thing, but on rainy days, they may want to play in there. Well, this is still open open to the sky. So if it's raining, it's going to rain in here too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> well, no, it, it is it is something you know to consider. I think we've yeah. kind of viewed this as more of a quiet courtyard. If you want to go down and have a lunch, or you have some guests over and you want to sit down there, could be a nice little space. You know, I don't think it's really envisioned as somebody having a a party or a gathering down there just because you know there's people's uh, living you know living just on the other side of those windows all the way up. Yeah. The it's just an idea to open up more facade area with windows. Uh, again, just because of the, the dimensions of the building didn't, you know, this was kind of no man's land. So it really mm -hmm. allowed us to utilize it and create something a little more dynamic for the building. Bob, uh, I think the kids were play underground in the pool. <laughs> that's, <laughs> right. That's, right. that's right. Well, that's right. That, that would concern me. Yeah. If I remember correctly, the pool isn't that big. If it's yep. the same dimensions of when it used to be at the health club there. Yeah, it's not it's not a huge pool, but nope. uh, I think it's, you know. I always thought of it as a big shot, a uh, big um, heated pool, you know, for like a. No, I remember going pool. in there before it was. Uh, I used to thing. go in there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I do think that the pool would be quite a unique offering. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, for a downtown uh, apartment. Sure. Yeah, especially if we can get some daylight down in there and kind of. Yeah. Give it helps a, it, a bit it of a helps all your, Yeah, that helps it all your moisture down there as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
I know we've heard a, quite a few funny stories from members of the community about that fitness center and uh, especially the, the pool area. So uh, mm -hmm. most of them positive. So, you know, it's worth, it's worth trying to restore and, and keep and, uh, you know, create some new memories down there. Okay. Well, good luck with it. And hopefully we'll be seeing you shortly. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. We will look forward to bringing this project back to you in the final form. It's an exciting project. And I, as I said, it's a very, another important piece of the puzzle for that corridor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gary. Appreciate it, the council. Have a good thank night. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So moving along, do we have any notices or any uh, uh, further comments from any board members? Mr. Chairman, the Bruins are down five to three. <laughs> oh, thank God for mute. <laughs> <laughs> was a background noise yesterday? <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit. So yeah. I don't know. Sometimes it's, 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 it's not cheering it's though. How we nearly bad. cheering? We have no <laughs> cheering coming out there. So, but okay. So besides that, if, if we have any further comments, if not, we can make uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I I just have a I just have a brief comment um, sure. about the community preservation commission. Mm -hmm. um, so we met. We had a public hearing in the month of May, and we actually had a training at the end of the month of May. And so our next meeting is actually this Thursday and we called it as an additional meeting. That way we could get that training in and the training was really valuable. Um, so we just had that about two weeks ago. And then this, um, this Thursday, which is more along our regular, which is our new, which is our new meeting. Our regular meeting schedule is usually the last Thursday of the month, the fourth Thursday. Um, but we're going to be discussing the public hearing and the survey that was sent out to the community. Um, we're going to be reviewing the preservation plan draft. So this, I think, will be the first time that it's um, more of a public document. Um, and then we're also going to be approving or looking to approve the application form and the eligibility form and the recommendation form. Um, so those are some of the items that are upcoming this Thursday. And then finally, this was a little bit different than I reported out a few months ago because it shifted. But we're looking at opening our... Um, application period, um, the eligibility would be August 1st. The applications would be due September 15th. And with the idea that we could be awarding um, before Christmas time in the middle of December, December 16th for our first year of applications this year. So we're, get, we're getting close. So, Nate, I have to say that, oh, go ahead, Bob, I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying it sounds exciting. Yeah, I was going to say, as it turns out, this turned out to be quite a, a, a committee. I, I think it's uh, the work that's being done is important, and I think it's exciting, actually. So, uh, yeah, yeah, the training was actually really exciting because we got to see, I think it's 183 communities, cities, and towns across the state have adopted it. And so it was really exciting to see oh. what other um, towns have done over the last 20 years since it's been enacted. Um, so that uh, was really uh, an informative meeting, and we learned, we learned a lot, which was great. Um, and we also, just as a report out, we actually have, I think it's three years of funds to um, potentially distribute, assuming that we get applications, and they were about um, three quarters of a million dollars each with an additional uh, quarter million dollar match from the state. So I think we have about three million dollars that we could potentially distribute um, this year. We don't have to distribute all of it, um, but we can. Jesus Christ. Sounds good. It's exciting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that update. Anybody else have any updates? Not so exciting over at NEMCOG these days, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have Mr. Lockhart to finish it, to fill us in on the historic board at this point. So, um, so if that's all we have at this time, so we can make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Move. All right. So I moved second. by Mr. Malovich, second by Caleb. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Um, we have adjourned. Good night and thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you.